uh, team, our fan base, our alumni, and uh, we're excited about it. But uh, we're moving on to a very good Coastal Carolina team, the first game in the Sun Belt Conference, and it's going to be a big-time game, big-time atmosphere. I know we're sold out and uh, look forward to Saturday. Thank you, Coach. Our first questions come from uh, Steve Little with the Charlotte Observer. Please go ahead, Steve. Okay, Coach, uh, to kind of dovetail off what you just said, um, it, it, it struck me this morning that, um, that that you've got several games in a row here that that have been like, in one way or another, a big game. First, you were playing uh, UNC Charlotte. Uh, it was a big rivalry, at least among the Charlotte people. Uh, the, you have UNC, and, and now you've got a, uh, a game against a really tough opponent like Coastal Carolina. H- how do yep. you manage to, um, you know, each week keep and get get the guys back focused after they have a big victory? How how do you bring them back down to earth or get them focused on the next game? That's just part of our core values of always competing to be better today than we were yesterday, be better tomorrow than we were today. Um, it's part of our core values of pride, passion, and purpose. We have a purpose for what we're doing. Our goal is to win the Sun Belt Conference Championship in a bowl game, and we have pride in that, and it's pride is a personal responsibility and daily excellence. And if you approach every single day with the mindset that we're going to be better today than we were yesterday, then you can get up for anything, and not, not any one game is more important than another. We're not looking down the road six months, two weeks, three weeks. We're taking it day by day, trying to be the very best that we can be uh, today, and if we'll do that consistently, then you show up and play your best ball every Saturday, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Uh, if I can follow up, the other question I had was about yeah. Demetrius Taylor from Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he had an unbelievable game. Have you ever have you ever coached uh, someone who had a, a had a game like that where everything happened in one in one afternoon? You know, I actually was talking to our staff about it. The only other game that I remember a defensive lineman being as dominant was, um, and it wasn't to the extent that he was, uh, Demetrius was, because that's probably the single most dominant defensive effort I've seen. But Nick Fairley Mm -hmm. in 2010 against Alabama had a strip sack fumble and knocked uh, McElroy out of the game. Uh, And and so that that was the only thing I could equate it to. But to have what he had – I mean, I think the most underrated play of the game was uh, we held him to a field goal after a 15-play drive, and Demetrius Taylor tipped a pass that would have been a wide-open touchdown. We blew a coverage in the back end, and he tipped a pass that uh, caused it to go to fourth down, and we ended up stopping him, and uh, that was a difference in the football game. He hasn't uh, bothered you about getting some snaps at running back, has he, after that uh... Fumble return. No, the way uh, no, the way he got <laughs> tackled by by uh, Sam Howell on that interception. I mean, he shouldn't be coming in here for no snaps. Crud, that <laughs> sucker should have scored twice. I was all over him. About it. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, thank you, Steve. Our next questions come from Alan Blano with the Sun News. Please go ahead, Alan. Yeah, hey, coach. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, so. Coastal's been in uh, the conference now three years, and, um, you know, you guys, Arkansas State and Troy, have clearly been, you know, the three best teams over that time. Do you think um, – does Coastal need to beat one of you three uh, at some point to be considered maybe a serious contender in this conference? Yeah. All I know is they're a really good football team that's got an excellent offense, an excellent defense, that's scored 100 points the last two games, number eight total defense in the country ranked right now. Um, and so I don't know what, what they need to do. All I know is that they're the next opponent for us, and we're going to have to play our best football if we want to have an opportunity to win Saturday. And for us, that's, I mean, we're trying to, you know, you play it to quote Herman Edwards, you play to win the game. So I, I don't know about anything other than we're trying to play them on Saturday. Hi, right, coach. Uh, I just got a couple other quick ones. Um, yeah. One, yeah. are you, uh, are you guys, uh, healthy? Are you you going to be missing any key starters in the game this weekend? Uh, we, we don't have anybody that is definitively out. We've got a lot of guys that are questionable, and I'll be able to update that on Thursday or Wednesday. Okay. So it's possible you'll be without a couple guys if you're not sure. Yes. Yeah. Possible. Questionable. Right. And lastly. Fitty, fitty. Uh, lastly. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Coach. No, good. Okay. Yeah. And lastly, um, uh, yeah, just obviously you took over a really, really – a uh, good program, uh, so you probably don't want to, you know, completely change things. But can you point to anything that you've done as the head coach to uh, put your stamp on the program or change things a little bit? Nope. Um, 
I mean, our, we got really good football players who play hard and coaches who coach them hard and, and tried to form a, a team identity for this year. But uh, it's not about me. We, we we got really good football players, and our teams play hard and play together. So I don't think there's anything particular that I've done.